Well, some good news. We need some good news on folks getting back to work. Kroger is seeing a spike in job applications following a massive hiring event last month, resulting in nearly 5,000 new job offers, and they actually have 10,000 jobs they want to fill. Let's get reaction from Market Watchers Francis Newton Stacy, Dave Manny, and John Lonsky. Good to see you all. John, this does say a lot for the American worker the fact that despite all of those great unemployment benefits that are out there for people, there are so many people that are, that are looking uh, for long term jobs out there. Well, that's a change for the better. But the fact remains that there are a number of small businesses that are in desperate need of workers. I mean, we had a survey taken by the National Federation of Independent Businesses. That's a trade association for small businesses. It consists of a lot of smaller construction companies and restaurants and a record 48% of those responding to the survey claimed that job openings were hard to fill. And, and, and moreover, the biggest problem faced by small businesses is not taxes, not regulation, not slow sales, but rather labor quality, getting the right people to fill the available slots. But, Francis, I, I don't want to bury the lead here, which I think is a good lead, a good news story lead, which is that Kroger's did fill 5,000 jobs. They did offer, they did, by the way, have to offer a lot, $16 an hour, and when you add in the benefits, it comes to $21 an hour that Kroger's putting out to get these new workers. Is that, is that kind of going to be the new standard here in, in the United States in order to get the workers? You're going to have to go above 15 an hour? Well, I think that is sort of becoming the new standard, and we've tried to legislate that as, you know, a $15 an hour minimum wage. However, these inflationary pressures and the supply, uh, supply chain constraints and some of this unemployment backlog is going to probably change going into the latter half of the year. Uh, the Fed has very little they can actually do because the problem is is that everything that they do has a lagging effect on the actual economy. The markets will trade the news in an instant, but it has a lagging effect. And because we have deflationary pressures coming into the system in the back half of the year, bank loans are going down, fiscal spending, the rate at which fiscal spending is coming in is going down, which is, would be the same as tapering on the balance sheet. So some of these things are going to work their way out. And that means that I think that these extraordinary measures that Kroger and others are taking to get employees will be mitigated into the end of the year. Well, perhaps. But, Dave, I'm just wondering, do you suspect, this is a conspiracy theory, but that the Biden administration was looking to bump up salaries to, to have a minimum $15 an hour wage uh, by increasing unemployment benefits by so much for so long? Yep. <laughs> wow. Yes, of course they were. I mean, it, it, it plays very much in line with their, you know, with their messaging and with their base. And frankly, I mean, I mean, I thought that the Trump administration was profligate, but I mean, this at the, the, the Biden administration is like, you know, profligate on, you know, uh, at, at, on a on a shore leave weekend. I mean, there's just like <laughs> no attention at all to kind of future implications of uh, of the spending. And 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 I very much believe that we're not seeing the full effects yet yeah. in these inflation rates and that we are in for a rough ride because I don't think there's going to be hard paper stimulus not okay. under this president. Uh, we're, we're getting a little pause in your electronic uh, uh, signal there for, for uh, Dave. But, John, I want to go back to you. Uh, the, the fact is, is that we just we just had the story on on hundreds of billions of dollars that might have been scammed away from these government programs. When you have this much money uh, with an administration, let's face it, that doesn't have a lot of business experience. They've got more political experience. They're willing uh, to look askance at, at money being wasted in politics, unlike the Trump administration that had a, a, a more of a razor focus on waste in government. Uh, you're going to have spending that is just totally out the window. I mean, spending on, on useless things, scamming, being subject to scammers, et cetera. Uh, that's, that's a very bothersome problem, no? Oh, you are so correct. And when you're spending these huge amounts of money, you're inviting scammers. And I can't help but be troubled by the fact 
We say that we have all these great uh, data scientists around today. Why can't we do a better job of keeping track of each dollar spent? And moreover, why isn't this money, for the most part, going to people who really need it, not to people who don't need it? And that's one of the reasons why we're looking at this huge increase in personal savings. And as this th as savings bulge gets released, you are going to have higher inflation for a longer period than many people now expect. The other guest was spot on. Yeah, well, and Francis, we did have that, that comment from Bullard today from the Fed uh, that, in fact, they may have to raise rates in 2022, a year earlier than, than we heard from the Fed chief. Uh, and that's what's sending markets down so much today. Uh, is, is there going to be a continuing back and forth on this or will the Fed come to a consensus that it's likely to happen earlier than later? I think that there will be a continued back and forth, and the and the reason is is that they're going to have to start tapering the asset purchases before they raise interest rates because the asset purchases are also easing, and so you don't want to put your foot on the gas and the brakes at the same time because you're going to negate your own policy. And so we won't really see any activity out of the Fed until they tape it, taper those asset purchases, but the fiscal stimulus is doing that for them because even yeah. whether or not we get an infrastructure package, the money's not going in at the same rate that it was because the spending is now over a longer period of time. And so there will be some tightening effect from the slowing in the fiscal stimulus. And I know many people agree with that and they say stop spending, but it will have a tightening effect on the economy. Dave, there's an old phrase, gilding the lily, which a lot of people suggest is what the Fed is doing. You have the release of the economy, not just here, but the world economy after the lockdowns, after the pandemic lockdowns. It's, it's, it's getting going on its own juices. There's pent up demand. So the consumers out there buying stuff. Uh, and you still have the Fed acting as though we're in a recession when we're coming out of a recession. But to buy, for example, every month, $40 billion of mortgage backed securities, what the hell's in their mind? I mean, we have we does does real estate really need the Fed to be buying 40 billion a month in MBSs? Clearly not. I mean, we're at this point where we're 40 years out from the kind of stagflation numbers, and 40 years is a long time for us to have institutional memory. And I'm afraid now that I'm an old guy that 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 people of my era, David, and probably yours, remember that much too clearly. And and I don't think that the that the core policymakers are taking the proper amount of caution. And I think we're all going to pay for it. And those of us in business are really going to pay for it as our consumers in the coming months and years. John, do you agree there's nothing we can do to stop it at this point? Well, we have to do our best to try to slow things down. I mean, we just can't go on with this current level of fiscal stimulus. We've yet to spend, as I noted earlier, the super high personal savings rate tells us we've yet to spend all the stimulus that we applied last year and recently. Yeah, right, There's right. no need for additional fiscal stimulus, and we have to show greater caution with monetary policy. My goodness, the spread between mortgage yields and the 10-year Treasury is up 1.4 percentage points. That ought to be wider. The reason why it's so narrow is because because uh, the Fed is needlessly buying all of these mortgage-backed securities right, each right. month. It's time to wake up. You know what I'm hoping for is gridlock. A lot of people say it's, it's a disaster when Congress is gridlock. I think that's just what we need right now to prevent any more of this spending that's leading to all this calamity all over the place. Thank you, gang. I appreciate it.